Greetings and peace in Jesus name. It's a wonderful venture wherein God and us enabled us to make use of the technology to disseminate information about him and about his word and about his purposes for us in this world. Today's lesson we're going to see about pastoral theology. In this lesson we're going to focus on uh, why calling is inevitable for us to engage in God's service. Without God's call, we will not be able to be effective and successful and we will not be able to be skilled in God's work. And God's calling is very, very necessary, very, very important for us to uh, be in God's service and to be of some use in God's kingdom. And in addition to God's call, there are certain essential qualifications that we need to acquire in order to be a faithful, sincere vessel for God and to be a useful uh, minister for God. And uh, this lesson... Uh, in this uh, series, we're going to study about the various aspects th that is uh, required of a pastor concerning his life, concerning his family life, concerning his uh, uh, spending of his time with the ministry, spending of his time in reading God's word and meditating God's word, spending of his time is with his family and spending time for himself and the upkeep of his personal health and things like that. And in addition to that, we are also going to see about how a minister does his work faithfully. What are the tools that God uh, makes? Uh, uh, what are the tools that are available for one to make use of in God's ministry and how does a minister makes use of it in order to serve God and in order to serve people. So we're going to see all this thing in this uh, particular uh, uh, lesson called pastoral theology. As a beginning, let's pray and uh, seek God's unction, God's blessing and God's provision for us to, for, uh, for us to understand the, 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 the greatness of this, uh, his purposes in our lives. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, once again, we submit our lives into hands. All that occasions in our life and all that happens in our life is 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 as under your God, under your purview. Lord, you are a sovereign God who makes everything possible to us, oh God. Thank you for making this learning possible for us, oh God. Lord, even though we are we are we are we are people in from different parts of the world, Lord, yet you have connected us with a, with a purpose, oh God. Yet you are helping us to understand your purposes and your will for our lives, oh God. As people learn this lessons of God, may they be enriched, may they be, may they, may they be enhanced and may they be enlightened by your word of God. Help them to be a useful vessel wherever they are, serving the church that they are part of it, serving the community that they are part of it and helping them to be a vessel of salt and light in the community that they are living in. Once again, we submit this class in your hands, believe with us, guide us. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. So today we are going to see about the, the importance of God's calling. No amount of uh, exercise, no amount of experience, no amount of skill, no amount of talent, no amount of, ex uh, no amount of competence can make a person to be a successful minister of God. And to be a minister of God and to be in God's service, what one primarily requires is God's calling. God's calling is inevitable for one to be engaging himself or herself in God's ministry. Even if one reads humpty number of books on leadership, humpty number of books on how to deal with people, humpty number of books on how to uh, do pastoral ministry, pastoral care and pastoral counseling, still it is inadequate for one to be a faithful and a sincere minister of God. So what is primarily required for one to be a minister of God is God's calling. God's calling provides us the necessary framework, prepares us and in, uh, provides us the, the stamping from heaven for us to engage in God's work. So in this lesson, we're going to study about what is God's calling and we're going to study about the types of God's calling and we're going to see about how one can receive God's calling and we are also we will see how some people get into God's ministry without receiving the call of God and uh, they, they say various other excuses uh, as to why they are in God's services. God's calling. God's calling is uh, of two types and general calling or particular calling. General calling and second one is particular calling. And as the word the general implies, it's generic in nature. Uh, it is something meant for all those people who believe in Jesus Christ. It is something uh, for all the believers of Jesus Christ, uh, irrespective of caste, creed, color, region and ethnicity and so on and so forth. Every person who believes in Jesus 
Jesus Christ are called to serve God as a witness, as a disciple, as a believer, as a salt and light of this world. So there is no choice for a believer of Jesus Christ. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, then God expects you to be uh, like a living a particular life. God expects you to be a living a testimonial life. God expects you to be a witness for him. So there is no choice with respect to those people who believe in Jesus Christ. In addition to those people who have received the, such a generic call, God did call people for full-time ministry. God did call people for a specific uh, a ministry. God did uh, provide the specific calling to those people who received this general calling from God. What? Uh, how can we define this calling? Uh, like, uh, like probably we can understand calling by making use of uh, this phenomena and uh, that is called as job satisfaction. All of us have a job satisfaction, whatever we do, whether we are a homemaker, whether we are a teacher, whether we are a lecturer, whether we are a carpenter, whether we are, uh, uh, whether we are like uh, somebody involved in managing a company, whatever it does, everybody does require a job satisfaction. What is job satisfaction? Uh, the sense of belonging, the sense of uh, an identification, the sense of accomplishment, the sense of uh, realization one's potential, the sense of uh, making use of one's skills and talents, that is called as job satisfaction. In spite of the oddities, in spite of the hardships, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the, all, all the limitations, every person uh, enjoys whatever he or she does. Uh, like there, there could be challenges, there could be limitations, there will be obviously uh, many kind of uh, difficulties will be there. But in spite of all these things, one does enjoy whatever work is assigned to them, or uh, him or her. In a similar manner, God's calling makes a person to like uh, uh, feel, uh, I mean, uh, to enjoy the presence of God in spite of the pressures, in spite of the oddities, in spite of the hardships and in spite of the limitations in this world. In ministry, if you're called by God, then you will enjoy, you will be able to endure all kinds of uh, difficulties that come your way. Ministry is not an easy uh, journey, ministry is not an easy endeavor. It is a difficult, uh, uh, it's nevertheless, it involves difficulties, it involves struggles. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 and 8, we find that uh, suffering is something part and parcel of a Christian life. Every person that we find in the Bible has necessary endured suffering. Every man of God, every woman of God has walked through the path of difficulties and suffering. And there is wilderness before one reaches the promised land. And God has rescued us from slavery, uh, like from bondage. And we have to walk, march through the wilderness in order to reach the path of uh, the promised land, in order to reach the inheritance. Uh, similarly, even in our Christian living, there is hardships, difficulties that is bound to come. And uh, in particular, in ministry, those of us who are engaged in ministry, like the in spite of the limitations, you will have a sense of a joy, you will have a sense of a satisfaction, you will have a sense of a realization that you are doing God's work, uh, you will have a sense of a, a completeness, a holism in your life. That is what we may mean by God's calling. You will not have, you will not have second chances, you will not have second thoughts as to why have why I have been in, engaging myself in God's ministry. Why should I not do uh, have not done the other work? Uh, like what makes me to uh, do such a kind of a work. Uh, you will not have second thoughts like that, but rather you will enjoy each and every moment you spend time with God, each and every moment that you are laboring for God. That is what we call as God's calling. And this God's calling is something like uh, is, uh, I mean, God uh, time and again calls people. And there are various ways by which one can receive God's calling. The first one is one hears the audible voice of God. One hears the uh, the the uh, one hears the voice from directly from God. It's a direct voice from God. And when when God wa when God wants to make use of us, make use of our skills and talents for for the establishment and then for the realization of God's kingdom, God still calls us. God will call us. And like a God, I mean, like a, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we find God calling individuals for His great mission. God calling individuals. Uh, right when they were formed in their mother 
Nahum. Uh, we find it in the, in the case of Jeremiah. We find it in the case of Samuel. God forming them uh, like a God calling them right when they're formed in the mother's womb. In Psalms 139, God says that I have, I know your frame. I know your being. I know your makeup. So God calls his people uh, like right when they are at the beginning of their living and uh, the beginning of the life, beginning of their existence. So God has called both in the Old Testament and the New Testament various people for his ministry. And uh, uh, and uh, those people, like uh, 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 after receiving the call of God, they have responded to it with a hesitancy. They realize the burden of it. They realize the difficulty of it. They realize the challenges of it. Uh, like uh, especially people like Jeremiah found it very difficult to comprehend the call of God because it is challenging. It is not easy. But in spite of the challenges, in spite of the in spite of his uh, personal excuses, God still used Jeremiah uh, to do a wonderful ministry for him and so you find uh, the first way to receive God's call is by uh, the audible voice of God secondly God speaks to us through his word God and God's word are inseparable and God and God's word are one and the same and when when we when we read and meditate God's word God will speak to us the Bible is a living word of God and God is a living God God is a God who speaks to us and God will time and again will speak to us through his word uh, the, the preserved the written word of God is very sacrosanct uh, as Christians we read God's word uh, like not as a religious scriptures not as a ritual uh, not as an accustomed the practice but primarily we read God's word in order to hear from God in order to in order to uh, listen to the voice of God in order to listen to the will of God and God speaks to us through God's word and how does God speak through God's word uh, when God's ministers speak from God's word uh, in the, through the sermons through the messages through their teachings uh, through their explanations through their elaborations uh, through their uh, through their uh, through the uh, sharing of God's word God will speak to every individual every individual every individual will have an opportunity uh, to get uh, the voice of god to get to get the will of god to get the purpose of god of god straight in their being so when god's people speak from god's word you will receive the call of god and when god when when ministers speak from the pulpit when ministers speak from the podium when ministers speak from the altar it straight away pierces into your heart it's basically straight away pierces into your being and you're able to realize that the pastor is not speaking uh, not in every message this pastor is speaking uh, to you directly and God is speaking to you directly through in and through the words of the pastor so you respond to the initiative you respond to the call uh, you respond to the uh, you respond to the the voice of God that comes to the ministers of God secondly God speaks to you when you read and meditate God's word individually as we gl glance through the God's word as we glean through God's word we will be able to understand that it is not mere reading and the, the words will pop up to pop up pop up to us the words will st speak straightly to us the words will convict us uh, uh, like in a greater way and uh, uh, nothing like that before and uh, in, a, in, a, in a fresh manner god will speak to us through his word and uh, yeah, I mean, it does not require you to have greater competence and skill to like uh, to read and understand God's word. Uh, like even if you are a layman, even if you are uh, uh, even if you are not an unlettered person, like if you, if you have if you read God's word and if you can listen to God's word, God can speak to any person. God is not a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of individuals. God can make use of uh, any individual. God can make use of any any medium to convey his uh, purpose and will for your life so when you read God's word God will speak to you directly and you will be able to understand the will and purpose of God when you read and meditate God's word and the third way by which God will speak to God speak to us is uh, uh, through our inner conviction uh, probably like uh, there will be an inner realization like uh, when we don't when you don't do God's work you will you will not feel satisfied you will be laboring here and there your mind will be restless you will be uh, thinking about various other choices and uh, the and God will speak straight away into your heart and there will be a conviction there will be a confidence that uh, uh, you are called by God to to do God's work and this inner realization will happen to God's people 
and the fourth manner uh, by which god speak to individuals is through visions and and uh, dreams uh, one needs to be very very cautious with respect to this particular thing uh, vision and dreams are uh, is yet another medium by which god will speak to an individual but one need to be very very cautious with respect to this particular medium uh, like uh, god is not uh, uh, disrespect of individual god is not uh, our step father god uh, god is a father to all people who ever believes him who ever accepts him who ever has received him god is a father to every person god does not need a secondary medium to communicate things to you god directly can speak to you god will directly will respond to you and uh, you have to respond to god's call so god will speak directly to every individual uh, so god is god will not make you suffer secondary medium to convey the message to you the classical example that i uh, that i make use of you to uh, make use of you to illustrate this particular thing is i have a son he was 8 years old if my son instead of communicating directly to me if he communicates through his uncle and uh, all that he requires all that he needs in his life how as a father i will feel uh, i will not be happy about my son communicating through my brother in law or my son communicating through another medium i want my son to come to me directly to approach me directly to ask me directly to 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 seek whatever he needs directly from me and that is what as a father i expect from him that is what i expect as a son to do to do unto me but if a son chooses an alternate medium i will not be happy and i will also not be happy to communicate things to my son through an indirect method either through my wife or through somebody else i will not be happy and that is not legitimate and that is also not properly proper and that is also not correct so i would like to respond to my son in a direct manner similarly i want my son to respond to me to speak to me directly in a similar manner we need to understand god's call so dreams and visions are yet another medium by which one can receive god's call so one should not immediately arrive at a conclusion that god has called me after receiving a dream or after receiving a vision i am not discounting on dreams i am not discounting on visions dreams and visions are uh, the legitimate and the valid methods that are used in the bible uh, the, uh, by god to convey message to the prophets and god did speak through an angel god did speak through a vision god sp- did speak through a dream god did reveal his purpose to the individuals through the dreams vision and the angels but god always uh, esteems his word the word of god makes it very clear uh, makes it very 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 clear the heaven and earth may pass away but not god's word god's word word is very very ultim- ultimate it's very very i mean it's it's sacrosanct god does not uh, consider anything co equal to his word god's word is very very supreme so when god speaks to us through vision and dreams we need to wait for god's call we need to wait for it to be confirmed through god's word and uh, we can take it uh, the god's call through dreams and visions as a confirmation of god's call whatever we is received for either by the ministers of god either upon reading god's word either by an inner conviction either by an audible voice some people will not immediately will not have the satisfaction will not have the confidence will not have the necessary uh, like uh, uh, will not have the satisfaction that they have been really called by god they will look for confirmation they look for a secondary confirmation from god in that sense vision and dreams is the best way by which god can confirm god's call and another thing we need to uh, realize is uh, uh, like a prophecy 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 is also we need to be very very cautious uh, just because a man of god or a woman of god prophesies us us and uh, uh, delivers the purpose of god that is not the ultimatum a uh, prophet prophet can say things to us in order to please us in order to encourage us in order to inspire us in order to motivate us in order to strengthen us in order to build us in order to in order to realize our potential our, our need to uh, work for god that is not the ultimatum for us to engage in god's call we need to wait for god's word a prophet is an yet another man or yet another woman ah uh, like uh, they are saying is not permanent they are saying is not the word of god they are saying is not immortal they are very very mortal being their words are fallible their words are bound to lose their words are bound to like lose its uh, significance over the passage of time so one cannot necessarily rely on any prophet of god i am not discounting on prophecy i am not discounting on prophets i am 
not discounting on the role of great men and women of God. They are necessarily used by God. So one cannot necessarily rely on those uh, uh, inspiring words of the prophets for one to uh, engage in God's ministries. Uh, even if a prophet utters an uh, oracle, even if a prophet utters a word, even if a prophet strongly conveys the message of God to you, you need to wait for God's confirmation by God's word. You need to wait for God speak to us. God is not a stepfather and is not a foster father. God is not uh, relying on the secondary means to communicate his will and purpose for you. So you have to wait for God. You have to ask for God's uh, uh, word to be confirmed uh, like upon reading, upon uh, uh, like uh, upon uh, through the sermons and so on and so forth. So one should not necessarily jump into God's ministry just on the basis of a dream or of a vision or of a prophecy. These are the various ways by which normally one receives the call of God. The call of God is an inner conviction. It's a strong realization. It's a strong uh, a push for, for one to engage in God's work. You will not have second thought. You will necessarily receive the job satisfaction and you will necessarily receive the confidence that you are called by God. That is God's call. That is what is primarily required for one to engage in God's ministry. After seeing about God's call, the inevitability of God's call, the types of God's call and the various measures and means by which we can receive God's call. Let's look into, let's try to understand the, some of the excuses, some of the, some of the reasons people give to engage in ministry without receiving the God's call. So, some people come to ministry without having a proper call of God and they say the following things. What are those things? The first thing is, some people say, my parents have dedicated me for God's work. My parents have ordained me for God's work. Right when I'm born, my father and mother have dedicated me, have honored God's call uh, by dedicating me to God's service. I'm the firstborn in the family. So as the firstborn, God wants the firstborn to serve him. So my parents obeyed God's call, obeyed the voice of God. And accordingly, they have dedicated me for God's work. Uh, it is all very good. That is the choice made by a father and mother. Uh, in response, in or in response, uh, as a matter of gratitude what, to what they have received from the father, from God. Uh, children are inheritance from God. The Bible says children are a gift from God. Every child is a necessary gift from God and an inheritance from God. So every parent thanks the Lord for the gift of life, for the gift of children that they've got, God had given them. So as a matter of gratitude, as a matter of thankfulness, every father and mother gives their child, ordains their child, dedicates their child for God's work uh, as a matter of thanking God. So the dedication or uh, the, the thanksgiving is not to be considered as God's call. It is what your parents have made before God. But at the same time, one need to remember uh, ordination or dedication can result in uh, you uh, can result in one receiving the call of God. There is high probability. There is high possibility. There is high there is high possibility that a per person who is ordained who is dedicated for God's work can receive the call of God. Uh, in the Bible, we find that Hannah, like after praying unto God, asking for a child, and she promising God that she will dedicate the child for God's work, and accordingly, after seeing the child, Hannah did. Dedicated Hannah ordained the child for God's work, and uh, and the young Samuel was raised in prophet Eli's home. The young child, child uh, Samuel was raised um, in God's service uh, in God's temple. As a matter of fact, he learned the things concerning God. In due time, God honored the dedication of Hannah and God did call uh, Samuel for his full-time service. So there is high possibility that people have been dedicated, people, people have been ordained for God's work, receiving the call of God. So I mean, because of your orientation, because of your temperament, because of your choices, because of your upbringing, there is every possibility that you, will, you can 
receive the call of God. So, so dedication can result in call of God, but dedication is not the call of God. We, we need to be very, very clear on that. Uh, many people, uh, like in uh, in Tamil, there is a saying: uh, people have been like, uh, like uh, the, the, there are certain things uh, like uh, set aside for God, sacrosanct for God, uh, like uh, uh, set apart for God. Uh, just because they set apart for God, that does not mean that uh, you have been called by God. Set apart for God can privilege you, can provision you uh, to receive the call of God, but you need to wait for the call of God eventually to come into your life. Uh, when you receive the call of God, uh, you can do God's work uh, in, a, in a much better way. The second excuse that people say is, uh, I have a burden for soul. Uh, like is, this is particularly true with people after they receive Jesus Christ. The moment they become the son or daughter of God, they have a burden. They have a realization that the people around them are lost. They have a realization that the people around them need to be saved. They have a realization that they need to do something for God. They have a realization that they have to build the kingdom of God. So because of this inner motive, because of this inner drive, because of this inner conviction, because of this push with from within some of them will feel that they are called by God and they want to engage in God's service uh, well it is true that uh, uh, like this uh, drive is good this uh, realization is good this uh, motivation is good this inspiration is good but this inspiration alone is not the the alone uh, is not required for one to engage in continual service of God uh, initially probably with the spurt uh, with this uh, initial excitement one can engage in God's service one can do ministry but ministry is not uh, an easy task means is not an easy endeavor ministry is not uh, like a simply sharing about Jesus Christ it is responding to the various issues and concerns of life it is uh, responding to the various problems and uh, uh, like uh, uh, the life issues of uh, life issues of uh, every individuals so it's not an easy talk initially people will be responding to you very very happily initially you will you will find the necessary take us for whatever you say uh, whether in action or your word people will really respond to you but as time goes by people will find it very difficult people will, will be lethargic to it people will be uh, like a uh, non-responsive to it people will not uh, uh, necessarily like you people will avoid you people will not uh, necessarily respond to whatever you are sharing so you will feel lonely you will feel burdened you will feel that uh, you, will, you will feel perplexed you will be wondering whether you are really called by God whether what you are doing is correct or not. So this initial excitement is not uh, necessarily this call of God. Uh, the initial excitement has to uh, like you pass through a momentum, pass through a stage and wherein it becomes an, a realization. It becomes a strong conviction in your being and as a result like you are able to do ministry uh, with handing or withstanding or withholding all forms of uh, uh, challenges all forms of limitations. So the second wrong reason is the initial excitement as considering as God's call. The other thing, uh, other thing that we need to remember is, uh, like some people, uh, like uh, uh, because of the encouraging words, uh, because of what the pastors are saying, uh, ministers are saying, in order to encourage people, they might be saying something that uh, uh, after realizing one's uh, potential, after realizing one's talent, after realizing one's skill, uh, the pastors will be, uh, in order to encourage the pastors will be saying, brother, God is going to use you, sister, God is going to use you, uh, you are very skilled for God. God and this skill has this skill has to be used by God and this sort of an encouragement by great men and women of God uh, like is not necessarily the call of God. This can be a saying of an individual. This can be saying of the pastor out of an excitement uh, in order to encourage us. Uh, this might be a time bound time bound thing. Uh, like one uh, uh, if one gets into ministry uh, necessarily believing in these words, then uh, one will not be able to sustain the oddities of life. One will not be able to sustain. Uh, will not be able to endure the pain and the difficulty and the loneliness that one one needs to see uh, uh, in ministry. So like this initial excitement or the encouraging words of God are necessary the call of God. The third or the fourth reason that people say for engaging in God's work. I have not found a, a work suitable. Uh, 
I'm not comfortable in any work. I'm not finding uh, like uh, my work uh, uh, to be a permanent feature of my life. Uh, where whatever I go, I've I've been working there only for a short duration. Uh, my I'm not receiving any job satisfaction. I, I'm not uh, receiving uh, confidence or completeness or holism in whatever I do. Uh, like uh, I think God's work is uh, uh, the, the 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 one destined for me. Instead of me spending my time in this world, instead of me spending my time engaging in the things of this world let me spend my time in doing God's work let me spend it my time uh, in doing God's work uh, like if I do God's work I will receive a satisfaction uh, just because people don't get into proper work just because people don't get into proper employment some people do consider ministry as the final option by which they can they can satisfy themselves this is not correct and this is not biblical also when God wants to make you of you God will provide you the inner conviction and the realization and you will not have second thoughts uh, uh, from doing God's work uh, you will feel uh, I'm missing something alas I'm missing something I'm, I need to do God's work like that you will have a realization sometimes people does not have that realization uh, people simply feel that just because I'm not uh, uh, fitting in any work let me do God's work that is not the order and that is not uh, what God's calling is all about and uh, the fifth reason is some people they fail miserably in their education they are not skilled they are not competent they are not advanced in this education they do not have a comprehension and uh, they were not successful in their learning just because they are not successful in the learning people feel that like uh, somehow ministry is their option ministry is the way out for for coming up in life uh, there were there was uh, situations uh, uh, in some part of this world especially now in, in, in our country especially in our in our reality people who are not uh, like well qualified who are not educated and uh, they are brought into the bible schools and they are asked uh, uh, they are asked to, to like uh, to 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 be to they are asked to like uh, engage themselves in biblical learning so as to come up in life this is this may be the case this may be true some years back but this is not the order this is not the times that we are living in we live in a knowledge age we live in a world uh, like we live in a world where people are like uh, uh, focusing on knowledge data information so as a minister of god like you need to be highly skilled you need to be highly competent you need to be a learned person you need to be you need to be you need to be proficient in the things of this world in the system of this world so without education without proper learning uh, getting into ministry is not the will of God it's not the purpose of God so you need to engage yourself in all forms of learning you need to be skilled you need to be you need to acquire the basic uh, necessary skills that are required for you to uh, survive in this world and ministry is not an easy endeavor ministry is not an easy task ministry is uh, a very very difficult uh, 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 enterprise it's very very difficult endeavor uh, it involves 24 into 7 work it is not an easy and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, ordinary work it is uh, a very very sincere and a comprehensive work so learning uh, without learning you cannot uh, be a ser effective servant for God and there were times uh, when God had used people without education uh, the unction of the Holy Spirit the unction of God God's call will necessarily will drive you will serve you will help you to uh, like uh, proclaim God's uh, good news in an effective manner but we live in a times the things are changing uh, you need to be equipped throughout the Bible we find that all of the men that are used powerfully for God are educated ones look at Moses Moses was one who was highly skilled and who was, uh, was skilled in all of Egyptian learning he was somebody uh, like a well proficient uh, both in Egyptian learning and, uh, and of the customs and of the culture and of the manners and of the geography history and the situation of this of the then known ancient near eastern world because of that god had used him to write the scriptures god had used him to write uh, things beyond his age god had 
made use to, of Moses to write about what had happened 2000 years before he was born and what had happened the diversity of the land the diversity of the people and the diversity of the activities and the diversity of God's actions was, was able to record everything because of his learning and similarly we find Daniel used by God powerfully in three three major world kingdoms uh, powerfully used in Babylon powerfully used in Medo Persia powerfully used uh, like uh, uh, under under uh, uh, under the Medo Persian empires Daniel was a great man of God uh, because of his learning he was used uh, uh, powerfully by God similarly in the New Testament we find Paul uh, like even the Paul was not been a, a real witness of uh, eyewitness of Jesus Christ some scholars say that Paul had not Paul wouldn't have seen Jesus Christ and some scholars are saying that Paul could have seen Jesus Christ uh, maybe uh, like uh, maybe uh, as a stranger uh, maybe for as, as an outsider how uh, in any case uh, Paul was somebody who who spoke the mysteries of Christ who spoke the mysteries of Christian living who spoke the greatness of the Holy Spirit who spoke the mysteries of uh, God's work in our life who spoke about how a church ought to be the discipline of the church the function of the church the work of the Holy Spirit so on and so forth many many uh, like a uh, fundamental uh, understandings of Christianity are necessarily conveyed to us through St. Paul uh, uh, somebody well proficient in the Hebrew scriptures somebody well proficient in the Hebrew tradition, God made to made use of his uh, learning to help people to understand how Messiah, Messiah uh, has been proclaimed his part and parcel of the scriptures, how Jesus is found in the scriptures, how as a Christian one meaning is to go past uh, the Old Testament traditions in order to have a belief in Jesus Christ. So Paul was a powerful uh, testimony of how a God uh, can use a person before kings and before royal uh, men and women. Uh, so learning is no hindrance for God. Uh, learning is necessary, will serve us, will take us to be used powerfully in the greater levels. According to our learning, according to our competence, according to our capacity, according to our skill, according to our potentials, God will necessarily use her. If you are highly skilled, then God, you can expect God to use you in, in, in ways and means that uh, an ordinary believer is not used of. God will, God will present you before the kings. God will present you before the learned men. God will present you before the, before the wise people uh, to, to engage in disseminating God's truth before the learned community. So learning is no hindrance. Uh, so don't get into ministry uh, like as an excuse uh, without learning. So le ministry involves learning, a uh, high degree of learning. The other uh, normal excuse that people uh, get into ministry is uh, looking at the conveniences, looking at the comfortabilities, looking at the luxuries, looking at the uh, honor, looking at the privileges, looking at the status quo, looking at the esteem, uh, looking at the digni dignity, looking at the uh, looking at the monetary benefits, looking at the material benefits. People get into ministry. Uh, there are some people uh, who who feel that ministry is an easy route to come up in life. Ministry is a short term method uh, by which one can acquire a uh, material wealth. Ministry is a short term method to acquire money. Ministry is a short term method to acquire name and fame. That is not true. Uh, what we see in most of the ministers is not the reality. And there is another side to it. There is a flip side to it. Ministers go through loneliness. Ministers go through depression. Ministers go through pain. Ministers go through humility. Humiliation. Ministers go through anxiety. Ministers go through uh, like all forms of hardships that one will not. That is not presented to the general public. That is not presented to the believers. Most of the time, we find our pastors being happy. Most of the time, we find our pastors always uh, in a smiling face. Uh, they are not revealing any of their sorrow. They are not revealing any of their worry. They are not revealing any of the difficulty. They are not revealing any of their uh, the burdens to us. Uh, that is uh, their part and parcel of their 
life that is part and parcel of the work that is part and parcel of their calling that is part and part of what they have to endure in life so ministry is not an easy task ministry even though it privileges us with a lot of things it provides us with the honor it esteems us it dignifies us it gives us all the laurels all the accolades all the all the limelight all the identity everything but ministry is not only that uh, like uh, most of the time one need to realize that that is only part of the story that is not the complete picture and there is another side to it what that one needs to realize that one needs to understand so ministry is not an easy endeavor i've been saying that 24 into 7 into 365 into the days that you're living in you are called to exhibit a particular form of a living uh, both in your words both in your living both in your activities both in your family uh, both uh, uh, through your family and in all activities you are called to exhibit a particular pattern of living so it is not an easy endeavor so people get into ministry just because of the pride just because of the honor just because of the laurels that it brings in that is not the complete aspect of ministry ministry involves does involve hardships and hard it is that one need to remember <laughs> another thing that we need to uh, consider that our people are saying is uh, people who does not want to do hard work consider ministry as an easy work some people say ministers are doing only work for maybe 2 or 3 hours a week maybe what they are doing is only on a sunday rest all the days we find them enjoying life as uh, spending time happily with their family spending time moving here and there are uh, doing the things as they like as uh, spending the time joyfully are uh, like relaxing leisurely they are spending the life that is not true uh, maybe it, it might be true in some people but it is not true in most ministers even though the work on sunday involves maybe 2 hours or 3 hours or 5 hours or maybe for some uh, some some quantifiable amount amount of time but necessarily the preparation that is required is uh, uh, that it consumes the entire week if you are a good minister of god if you are a genuine minister of god then you need to be you need to be thinking about your ministry all through this week uh, you cannot necessarily like you get into preparation of the sermon or you will not necessarily get into preparation of uh, uh, the services only on a saturday uh, right from right after sunday sermon uh, you will be necessarily thinking about what you need to preach uh, you will be asking god for god's word you will be asking god you will be pleading to god god speak to me speak to me speak to my people transform my people Uh, provide me the word that will transform me that will uh, transform my congregation and uh, that will be a ray of word to them and uh, that will be a logo word to them and that will be inspiring them to do your work so every minister of god will spend the entire week seeking the in the presence of god uh, longing for god's will uh, longing for god's presence uh, so they will be preparing so ministry is not an easy task ministry is not a ta- is not a work uh, maybe for a couple of hours even the that couple of works demands uh, your entire personality your entire being all through this week you cannot be complacent you cannot be negligent you cannot be lazy uh, you cannot be uh, like you, you cannot be insincere uh, like if you are if you are complacent lazy insincere and lethargic and uh, lackadaisical then it will reflect on your uh, in your sermons it will reflect on your preaching it will reflect on your counsel it will reflect on your ministries and your ministry will not grow uh, the growth of a ministry is directly proportional to the growth of a minister the growth of a ministry is directly proportional uh, to the amount of uh, interest that a minister takes in the presence of god so like uh, all through this week he has to conceive about his people he has to consider about god's word he has to think about uh, like uh, he has to think about what to speak for his people he has to think about ways and means to about how to grow his people and that is a time consuming process and that is an energy consuming process and that is a holistic work and it is not done like in a half measure and it cannot be done in a half measure it has to be done with the heart and soul into it only when you when you when you pour a heart and soul into it you will be able to see the necessary results you will be able to see necessary transformation you will be able to see necessary uh, changes in the lives of this people so ministry is not an easy endeavor 
and the final common excuses that people say is ministry as an easy way to get into foreign countries uh, ministry uh, like uh, will facilitate you to move to foreign countries to earn foreign foreign earning earnings uh, to get money uh, to to make profits and things like that well this is true uh, because of this uh, exchange rates uh, because of this uh, reserve foreign exchange reserves and people who like to get out of our country especially if you are from the third world country if you are from a poor country uh, you like uh, uh, any possibility of you moving to the first world country or the developed country will enrich you financially will enrich you monetarily will enrich you materially uh, just for the prospect of material growth just for the prospect of getting financial uh, Uh, financial impro- improvisation or improvements in life one should not get into ministry uh, one should not forget that our god is a just god our god will honor those people who have committed their life for him if you are sincere in your calling if you are sincere in your commitment then god will definitely provide with the, you the riches our god will definitely bless you and god's blessing is contingent upon your conviction and your commitment and if you as faithful in the little things god will definitely make you a lord over many things and as the word of god says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you if you seek god's word faithfully and god will definitely will honor you if you are sincere in your commitment god will take you to places god will take you to ice god will necessarily will take you to rich things beyond your comprehension and beyond your understanding uh, so far friends we have discussed about the inevitability of god's calling the types of god's calling the ways and means of uh, how one can receive god's calling and uh, finally we talked about some of the excuses people say why they get into ministry without receiving the call of god to sum up let me highlight three quotations uh, said by three prominent individuals about god's call the first one is martin luther the doyen of reformation he says like this Uh, wait for the call of god even if you are wise and skilled and knowledgeable like solomon or daniel without the call of god don't get into ministry it is something like this just as you would like to avoid hell just as you would like to be uh, get, getting rid of hell similarly don't get into ministry without receiving the call of god a uh, call of god is very very important for you to engage in god's work so god's call is very very uh, necessary and important for us to get into ministry another quotation by john wesley he says like this people who get into god's ministry should receive the conviction should receive the realization that the spirit of god was upon me just as the spirit of god was upon jesus christ you all should have the realization that you have the call of god you have the spirit of god upon you it is god who has called you it is god who has called you to engage you to preach the word of god to proclaim the good news of god to heal people to deliver god's people uh, you, every person who have been called by god should have the realization that he has been uh, he has received the the unction the, the 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 presence of the holy spirit upon him and thirdly another great uh, saint of god bishop matthew simpson says like this without the call of god don't get into ministry uh, it is good for you to engage in other labor but when you are called of god leave off all your work leave off all your other engagements and get into ministry uh, when you when you realize that god has called you don't uh, uh, still continue the, with your work give up everything give up everything and get into god's work and god's work is very very primary and important friends thus far we have seen the inevitability of god's calling the ways and means of receiving god's calling the types of god's calling the excuses that people say uh, for getting into ministry without getting the call of god and the the importance of god's calling so we will sum up for this day and we will con- again continue in another session dealing about the various requirements that one requires in addition to receiving the call of god let's pray gracious lord once again we submit to your hands thank you for being with us all through this 
hour you have been so good to helping us to understand why our lives matter why we are important why we are significant uh, why why you require us oh god lord your work is not an ordinary work lord you have called people both in the world and the new testament oh god even in our times lord you are one who was calling us oh god lord as you call lord help us to respond to your call faithfully and sincerely oh god lord help us to realize that it is one of the most important thing the foremost thing in our life oh god it is something greater than all the vocations all the active it is in this world of god help us to realize the greatness of your call help us to submit and respond to your call we we submit our lives in your hands oh god we thank thee for our wonderful friends who are listening to your word oh god bless them oh god like whatever whatever they do god lord bless it oh god wherever they are oh god make them a blessing make them a channel of blessing oh god help them to be a strong pillar of the churches help them to be a strong pillar of the faith that they are part of it oh god lord be with them guide them oh god help us together to build your kingdom kingdom on this earth oh god we submit this learning we submit this medium in the hands we ask all this in a precious name amen amen thank you god bless you and we will continue to see in another lecture thank you god bless you